Scorpio for a very long time. The last time I saw you on the screens, you were at a circle together with other, you know, uh, professors. That's right. You were distributing leaflets. That's, right. <laughs> That's yeah, recently. It's totally around that, uh, atomic. Atomic overhead. Okay. It looks similar to circle. Oh so yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. what do you? What have you flagged? So quite a number of things. Thank you very Apart much. Apart from the shortage, uh, shortfall in ballots so, and the so seal that was broken, video. which has yes. been fixed. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Samson, and good morning to your viewers and listeners. Uh, great to to be here. Um, even before I highlight some of the issues that I'm concerned about, um, I, I think in the Bosman's response to your question about the lightning system. Right. Um, he was quite specific in saying that at the regional level, they've done provisions by way of generators, generators. right? Mm -hmm. Constituency level, they've done the same thing. And then he provided a privileged information, which says at the branch level, they've made a provision, provision of water, exactly. Oh, we, we, we have some lights we use in our work. And for those ones, we have, we've made accommodation for every polling station. Okay. For those ones, it's, it's, been, it's part of the EC's processes. So the material, when we talk about election materials, we have what we call sensitive. The sensitives are, are the ballot papers, the biometric verification devices, but we have non-sensitive. There are other materials yeah. which we send to each of the so police. We have battery propelled lights. Battery propelled you, lights. Okay. All those okay. ones are there. All right. And we have them in abundance for every polling station. Okay. All right. So, so thank you very much. One of the things that is of concern to me uh, immediately is the preparedness of the EC itself to conduct the election in the next couple of uh, days. And I say so because um, as we speak, the EC has not made public the individuals that they have recruited to manage the election at the various police stations across uh, this country. And often what I have discovered about this EC, this particular EC, or this particular, the officers currently managing the EC, is that they, they try to hide uh, explanations behind, there is no law compelling this, or there is no, the law doesn't say this, but there are some things that, excuse me to say, are just commonsensical. One would have expected that an institution that prides itself or claims that one of its values is transparency, you don't wait to be pushed um, in order to provide information. In fact, you provide information ahead um, and allow um, people to look at the information and draw your attention to things that they, f they feel might, might need some clarification. Of. We, have, we have seven or six days to election, if I'm not mistaken, and the political parties are clearly have no sense of the individuals. And this is important because there are suspicions that some individuals who are holding executive position in some of the political parties, particularly in the MPP, um, may have been recruited to serve as uh, the individuals who may either be issuing ballots or be uh, doing the inking or maybe uh, checking the names in the register and so on and so forth. And it is important, particularly in the interest of free and fair elections, that these things are cleared up if there are any things of that nature. And in fact, it is in the interest of the EC that these things are done much better to enhance its image. But as we speak, we haven't have that done. Then the other issue is we need to also know, we hear that election materials have been dispatched. Uh, we need to know um, and be clear on particularly the equipment that are going to be used during the election, the biometric devices, um, how many are expected in each uh, branch or each police station um, in the country, how many have been dispatched and have all been dispatched, are they working well, are there some things that we should worry about. I ask this because I think in the next couple of days a lot more of this will come up. Uh, as we speak, I know for Asawasi, for instance, where they have 215 uh, polling stations, 215 polling stations. And if each polling station is expected to have uh, two of the BVDs, then they were expected to have 430 uh, BVDs. My understanding is that only 401 has been delivered. And the explanation of the EC is that they will manage. Now, that raises for me a concern. They will manage simply means that when a BVD is broken down in one branch, they may probably run and go look for um, an extra from another branch. All these things delay, I mean, the, the process. And by so doing, we'll keep people in the queue for a long time and may even disenfranchise people because some people may just come in and they just uh, walk, walk away. But also, I want to, uh, my, 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 my colleague here, and when I refer to him as a colleague is because we've been classmates in Legon um, mm. from uh, first degree all the way up. So, 
and we've been teaching together in Legon also, except that he has, uh, in his role in the EC, become something else. So I decided to <laughs> kind of uh, uh, stay, away stay away from him completely. <laughs> yes, because I think, if he was also our classmate. So it's our year group that is on the show today. That's right. Now, I want to, I want Bosman to provide some clarity. Um, Am I, am I? Yeah, go on, go on. I want Bosman to provide some clarity on the officers who are working for the EC on the election day, right? My understanding is that the EC is saying that a lot of them uh, will not be able to vote. Um, the individuals who have been recruited to manage the elections will not be able to vote. And the reason is that many of them will be deployed to places where they do not have their votes. And my understanding, again, is that when they complain, they were told by the EC that um, they have to choose between working for the EC or basically choosing to go and cast their votes. And I was told that Bosma in particular said that the EC is learning from its mistake and these things may not happen again in the future. Uh, if the EC is quite forward looking and really wants to make sure that it does its work by being the institution that creates the enabling environment for all eligible voters to vote, then it stands to reason that even for the people, particularly for the people managing the election, there is no reason why, by working for the EC, they should be disenfranchised. And so I'll, I'll be happy if he provides some uh, clarification on, on that. You're talking about EC's offices. You know the EC has permanent staff and then temporary staff. Right. In times like this, they recruit temporary staff. The temporary staff they have recruited, which is about 210,000 mm -hmm. um, across the country, teachers, nurses, and all kinds of people, many of them are going to be posted to so many different places um, across the, 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 the country. Uh, to work, and my understanding currently is that by virtue of the fact that the EC, in fact, if he has at yesterday's IPAC, IPAC meeting, is claiming that they are now training them, the EC is not even sure where they are sending these individuals yet, and the possibility is that many of them would not be sent to where they already have their votes. Mm. If that happens, potentially... So if they had been recruited early enough, that's there right. would have been an arrangement for them to transfer their votes. But they would have been part of the special voting list. Okay. And that hasn't happened. Mm. And if we are talking about 210 potential uh, individ uh, individuals that are potentially being disenfranchised, then we have a big problem, in my view. Because Did you every say 210? 210,000, sorry. Mm. 210,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, if, well, first of all, let me know the veracity of that issue, okay. and then we can mm. proceed, if you don't mind. Mm. Yeah. You want me to come in? Yes. I think uh, the first, uh, you mentioned that we've not given the names of the officials we are, we are going to use for the elections to the party. We've done that. And this is not a national thing. We do it at the constituency level. Uh, I know we did it. By law, we are supposed to do it 10 days. It should be at least 10 days before. And the so deadline was supposed to be Wednesday. Wednesday. So we did that. But what, what normally happens is that the people you have recruited, not all of them will show up for your training. Because not all of them will show up. What we give to the parties, when we finish their training, we do updates. So yesterday at IPAC, we, we mentioned to the parties that once we conclude the training, we are going to update the list. So certainly you realize that for someone who has indicated, I will be the presiding officer, the training day, the person will not come. And there are even, there are even instances where the person has gone through the training the day before the election, the person will give you a note. So, so when you gave the list of presiding officers to the political parties and you gave them a 10-day ultimatum, what were they supposed to do? The 10 days ended Wednesday. Ended Wednesday. What were they supposed to do? To so, raise objections? Or to what? raise objections. And, and this is part of the process, to okay. raise objections. If they have evidence that a particular person belongs to a particular party or is well known as an operative of a party, and we did the same for the returning officers. So okay. we had both parties, especially the petition. So do you know if they have raised any concerns? So, so about far, something? so far, nothing has come to our attention. Okay. But usually, when they do, our district officers will alert us, All right. and we will quickly set up a committee to deal with that. Okay. I think, uh, Professor, the potential also of disenfranchising. Uh, I think that one, that one, that one. What, what usually happens is that, you know, the time of the recruitment, not all of them. Not all the, the time of doing the special voting, not all of them had been recruited, but a number of them at the time had been recruited. So those people took part in the special voting. You know, the special voting is for media, security personnel, and election officials. When you look at the numbers, I believe election officials out of the 131,478, I believe election officials will be more 
will, will probably constitute a majority of that number. But still, with the 210, that means we still have a significant number and outstanding. The instructions we give to our district officers is that as much as possible, ensure that these are people, because usually the people who work uh, for us as temporary officials, about 99.9% .9 of the time, they are registered voters in those same constituencies. Right. In 2020, we did the same, so we do instruct them as much as possible. We are the election management body. It shouldn't be said of us that we are taking any action to disenfranchise anyone. So usually when you even come for interview, and we've noticed that, oh, you are a registered voter in the Ashanti region, but you want to work in Greater Accra, we say no, no, no. Mm. But we don't want to be part of your decision not to vote or... So you are saying that the potential that the, it doesn't exist, the, that it will be disenfranchised? Oh, no, sir, well, I, I was making the point that in the, we tell the district officers, make sure you assign them to places where they can... Votes. Also vote. But okay. you know there could be instances where somebody who votes at Kukumlimli, okay. then the person is working at, let's say, a dental. Those ones would ha can happen. Okay. But what we've told them is as much as possible, mm -hmm. ensure that, because usually around 12 o'clock, 1 p.m. there about, mm -hmm. the process, the places become so okay. quiet. Thank you. Thank I you think there that. was a question mm -hmm. about BVD. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for the BVD question, you know, uh, for every polling station, we give them two BVDs for every polling station. We give them two. And the example you gave that in Aswansi, instead of 423... 430. 30, they had 401. And you know, what normally happens at times is that, you know, something in some of our polling stations, that we call some of our polling stations split centers. This year, we are using the threshold, the maximum threshold for each polling station is 700. So if you had a polling station that was 800, automatically it will be divided into two. So it will become Joy FMA and Joy FMB. And we are supposed to have two mm. verification devices for each of them. Right. So instead of Joy FM becoming only getting two, now that it's become A and B, mm. then it's become two for A, two for B. So in worst case scenarios, at times what we do is that when we will not be able to cover all the polling stations. Then what we say is that for A and B, you can even have one as backup. By about 98% of the time, all the polling stations will have two. Okay. And don't forget that in 2020, although we had two per polling station, in almost all, in all the polling stations, they didn't even use the second one. So as long as you have the one, and each device can, can stand for about 14 hours, once we charge it properly. So, Professor, that one should not be a cause for concern. Okay, so hold on. And, and I want uh, Professor White to hold on for me. Let me go to Nanao Hininto. Briefly, I want you guys to raise any issues that you may have. And then you have the, the point to, the opportunity to raise your substantive 